Welcome. This video is going to talk about the relationship between the equilibrium constant K and thermodynamic favorability. And this is covered in the textbook. It's the last part of chapter 17. And within this PowerPoint, there's going to be some practice problems. So I encourage you when you see a practice problem to hit pause on the video and take some time to read through the question and think about what your responses are before you listen to what my responses are. And then you can kind of check your work. All right, so the first thing for you to pause and think about is this reaction right here. So we've got the reaction, a reaction being given, we've got a delta G value, and the question asks me, is this forward reaction thermodynamically favorable? And what we might remember from thermo is that thermodynamic favorability depends upon the sign of delta G. So if your delta G value is positive, that means your reaction is not thermodynamically favorable. That means it will not kind of proceed spontaneously. If the reaction has a negative delta G value, then it is thermodynamically favorable. And thermodynamically favorable means you're, there will be a net um, you know, conversion of reactants into products spontaneously. So your reactants will spontaneously turn into products under those conditions. So it looks like for this reaction, our delta G is negative 102, so yes, it is favorable uh, because of a negative delta G value. And that's all you need to provide for your reasoning. You just say, because delta G is negative, that's it. So negative delta G means it's favorable, means reactants are going to spontaneously turn into products. Therefore, I'm going to expect to have uh, more products at equilibrium because that forward reaction is thermodynamically favorable. Therefore, as a result, when I measure the equilibrium mixture for this reaction and I try and calculate the K value, our K value is a ratio of products over reactants. So I expect to have more products than reactants in this scenario since that reaction's favorable. So I should see a K value that is going to be greater than 1. So in fact, we notice there's this relationship between the sign of delta G and the value of K. If your delta G for a reaction is negative, that means the forward reaction is favorable and your K is going to be greater than 1. You're going to have mostly products when you reach equilibrium. If your delta G is positive, that means that forward reaction is not favorable, so you won't make very many products. You're going to end up with mainly reactants and you'll see your K value will be less than 1. We can also describe this relationship mathematically. So if you look on your equation sheet, in, under the thermodynamics section, you will see there are three equations for delta G. So this first one we've done already, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Right now we're going to focus on this equation right here, delta G equals negative RT ln K. If you're wondering what this third equation is, this is something we will cover later on in electrochemistry. We'll see there's also a connection between delta G and our voltage of an electrochemical cell. So more on that later um, in April. So right now we're focusing on this one in green. So delta G equals negative RT ln K. That R that we see right there is the same R we saw earlier in PV equals NRT. It is the gas constant. And if you remember earlier with the gas constant, we had three options for the gas constant that all had different units. When we did PV equals NRT, we were choosing the gas constant that either measured in atmospheres or in tors. For this equation, we're going to want to use this first gas constant right here because its units are in joules. And we're doing an energy calculation right here because delta G is a measure um, of energy. So we need to make sure we use the R value that is in joules. Pay attention to our units there. So this page is a summary of this equation. Since we're using the gas constant that is in joules, make sure you use this one right here, we need to make sure that our delta G value is also in joules. And that's important because often it will be reported in kilojoules. So we want to remember that there is a thousand joules in one kilojoule. So, you know, if someone tells you that the delta G is, you know, 40 kilojoules, then you should convert that and say, oh, it's 40,000 joules. So make sure we convert our kilojoules to joules there. 
Um, temperature must be in Kelvin. Notice right here, you've got Kelvin in your gas constant, so that's a hint there for you. Um, and then we're gonna be using natural log, so take a moment to find this button on your calculator if you haven't used it in a while. All right. The, here is our equation. This is set up to solve for delta G. We want to make sure we can rearrange it to solve for K. So we're going to walk through that real quick. So what I'm going to do is I want to get K by itself. So I'm going to start by dividing both sides by negative RT. I'm going to write that down here. So the natural log of K is going to be now negative delta G over RT. Don't forget that negative sign. And then the inverse of natural log is e to the, so make sure again you know where that button is on your calculator. It should be probably right above your natural log button. And this is our equation right here. So if you want to rearrange it to solve for k, it's k is e to the negative delta g over rt. Again, make sure we're careful with units when we're plugging in values here. Okay, so some things you will notice, you know, mathematically, when k is greater than 1, you end up with a negative delta g. When k is less than 1, you end up with a positive delta g. That fits with what we were predicting earlier. So if g is negative, we expect to make a lot of products because it's favorable. So you have a k greater than 1. If g is positive, that reaction is not very favorable, so you won't make a lot of products, so your k is going to be less than 1. All right. So now let's try some practice problems actually calculating this. So we want to calculate delta G and then calculate K. So it looks like in this uh, scenario, we're given a value for delta H and delta S. So to find delta G, we can use this equation first. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And my delta H is negative 508.3 kilojoules per mole. My temperature is 298 Kelvin. And then my delta S value, since my H is in kilojoules, I want to convert my delta S to kilojoules. So I'm going to write this as 0.178 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Notice how Kelvins cancel out, and you end up with two values that are both in kilojoules per mole. So I end up with my answer being negative 455. 0.3 kilojoules per mole. That is my value for delta G. It's okay if you report this in joules as well. Either way is fine. And now down here, we're going to calculate K. So this, here's where we're going to use this relationship. Delta G equals negative RT ln K. And the, excuse me, that's getting messy. Now I'm going to rearrange this to solve for K. Remember I did this on the earlier slide. Um, over here. So I'm going to use this format of it. So K equals um, E to the negative delta G RT. So it's E to the negative negative 455,300. You see I converted my delta G from kilojoules into joules. So I'm going to multiply by 1,000, and then I am going to divide that by R. And remember, the R value that we want to use is the one that's in joules. So that's 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And we know this is in Kelvin, so I better use my temperature that's in Kelvin. And you should notice with the units here, you see how Kelvins cancel, joules cancel, moles cancel. So all my units cancel, which works because I expect K to be a unitless number anyway. So... That works out. I'm taking the negative of a negative, so I end up with a positive value. So it's e to the 183.8. That is going to be a very large number. So my k value ends up being 6.7 times 10 to the 79. Wow, that's really big. Okay, so notice if I have a very large and negative delta G, I'm making a lot of products. This is a very heavily um, products favored reaction here. So is this process thermodynamically favored? Explain. So yes, it is thermodynamically favored. And now I kind of have two options for my explanation piece of it. So I could say because it has a negative delta G value, or I could also say because my K is much greater than one. So both those are good justifications for this process being favored.
All right, let's try one more calculation here. This time we're going to calculate delta G. Okay, but first let's write the KP expression for this reaction. So when you write a K expression, it's products over reactants. Coefficients become exponents, and we leave out solids and liquids. So products over reactants. So my product is ICL, and then my coefficient becomes my exponent. And then the reactants are I2 and Cl2. All right, so that's my KP expression. Um, if I were being asked to write a KC expression, let's just do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Um, sorry, my pen keeps smearing there. Okay. It would look like this. That's what a KC would look like. All right. Um, calculate the value of delta G. So I am given K. So it looks like I want to use this relationship, delta G equals negative R T L N K. So the R value I want to use is the one that has an energy unit in it. So I want to use this 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And I also noticed that this is in Kelvin, so I better convert my Celsius temperature into Kelvin. So I end up with 298 Kelvin. Now my Kelvins cancel out. And then I have the natural log of my K value, which is 81.9, which is our unit list number. So if I stop and plug this in my calculator, the natural log of 81.9 multiplied by 298 times 8.314, don't forget the negative sign, you end up with negative 10,915 joules per mole. Um, or if you want to, convert that into kilojoules since it is a pretty big number then you can write it as negative 10.9 kilojoules per mole all right so that's a little bit about the relationship between g and k thanks for listening